Pepper is the world's first social humanoid robot that is able to recognize faces and basic human emotions. Technology has changed a lot over the last few years. While today technology is super duper fast and allows everyone to share new trends, TikTok dances, and epic pranks, yo. <laughs> When I was growing up, technology was a lot simpler, or at the very least, a lot slower and a lot more inefficient. But hey, at least back in my day, I didn't have to see 47 pictures of Tiffany's dinner or whatever this is. W what? What is that? Why does it have so many views? The sad thing is, is that I am not even that old. I'm considered either a late born millennial or an early born Gen Z. Neither of those options are good. Is, is, is there an option C I could choose? Could I identify as neither millennial or Gen Z? The biggest shift for technology was probably the creation and mass popularity of smartphones. But there is a large part of the population and an even larger portion of the people active on social media and YouTube who are young Zoomers or even Gen Alphas. Hmm, Gen Alphas. Sounds way too cool for a generation we all know we are going to make fun of in five years. These youngsters do not understand the simpler times before the iPhone was created in 2007. That means that 15 year olds were born into a world where iPhone has always been the popular choice of communication. Back when I was a young lad, my family had a landline. Landlines are voice communication devices that you could buy which are connected by wires, which go through the house, through the ground, and even in the air. Alexander Graham Bell is often credited as the person who invented the telephone. Although while telephones were quite an impressive invention, I would imagine that the sales pitch was a little difficult to make at the beginning. Hey, you potential customer, would you be interested in buying this new device called a telephone? It allows you to, uh, could you not touch that? It allows you to communicate in your house with anyone else around the world that has a telephone. Uh, but, but how many have you sold? Not many, these are the first ones. Well, who am I going to talk to then? Don't touch that. Phones soon became popular, and people were communicating with landline phones across the world. But some people thought that the telephone was lacking. Ugh, I can't even take selfies or play Flappy Bird on this telephone. What is the point? Landline still remained popular in households throughout the 1990s and the 2000s. But when the smartphone rode into town on its majestic steed, landlines quickly started to fade in popularity. So, because landlines is following a similar path of the dodo bird, I felt nostalgic and wanted to reminisce about the simpler times and easier times of living without smartphones. Therefore, I took it upon myself to tell ya a yellow about these landlines righty here. Ouch. That's not the way to use the telephone. <laughs> In my house, we only had one landline phone for a long time, meaning that everyone in the house shared a telephone number. This meant that whenever anyone called, no one knew who was calling and for whom. There was no caller ID to conveniently tell us the name of the caller, so we just had to pick up the phone and not know who was on the other side of the line. Hello? Hello? Yes? Who is this? Mm, who are you trying to reach? What number is this? It could be grandma wondering if she was invited for Thanksgiving, or it could be a scammer wondering if we were interested in a free vacation to the Bahamas. And my answer to both of them would be identical regardless. With landlines, when you answered the phone, you would have to recite a speech like a receptionist. Thunder Mifflin. This is Kevin. This was nerve wracking to do, especially as a child. You had to speak to some unknown person. However, a lot of landlines had answering machines. While nowadays answering machines aren't used that often, back in the day, answering machines were epic. Were lit. If you were too scared to pick up the phone while it was ringing, you could wait to listen to the answering machine live. You would just huddle around the landline phone and wait to hear the person start speaking. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Is anyone there? 
If it was someone you knew, you could pick up the phone while they were still talking into the answering machine and start conversing immediately. Another fun feature of many landline phones was the cord. While mobile phones today are mobile, landline phones were not so mobile. Each phone was put on an electronic leash because why would you want to talk anywhere when you could talk in a four foot radius? Some people would buy extra cord that was dozens of feet long and connect it to their phones so that they could walk while talking. A novel idea! While in modern times you're able to customize your ringtone and overall sounds on your phone, back in the day you could not customize. You were stuck with the default noises. And let me tell you, they were quite breathtaking. Each noise was filled with meaning and purpose. Your call has been forwarded. Do you hear the meaning? And also, in order to call a person's phone number, you had to know the person's phone number. Today, people use speed dial almost exclusively. I hardly know anyone's phone number, except mine, my family's, and famous classic movie actor James Stewart's. You had to type a 10-digit number just in order to call someone. That phone is preposterous. I can hardly remember my own age, much less a random 10-digit number of my local Chuck E. Cheese. I might as well send a carrier pigeon. Fly, Davy. So maybe it's better that most of the world uses smartphones and do not use old landline phones. We can call at any time, anywhere, and can text and send people photos. You can also subscribe to a small YouTuber at the click of a button because you really like to see the total subscriber count increase or you like their content. You can also use map navigation with location tracking and- oh! But I can't answer the phone. Believe your 